Hello, this video is going to show how we can achieve functional safety using Sega Embedded Studio for ARM. Now, I could have used any ARM device supported by the Sega Embedded Studio, but what I've got connected to my laptop at the moment is a Nordic Semiconductor NRF51. And that's basically a Cortex M0, and it has an onboard Sega J-Link debugger. Now, the starting point, of course, is going to be the Sega Embedded Studio for ARM. And inside here, I've created a simple project. And if we take a look at some of the options for the project, we can see, first of all, here that I'm targeting a Cortex M0. And as the debugger, I'm using a J-Link. OK, so first of all, let's check we can build this project. So we'll do a rebuild. That's uh, built. And now let's debug it. So this is going to connect to the target using the Sega J-Link. And I should now be able to step through my program and debug it. It's a very simple program. But what I want to be able to do is, first of all, I want to be able to look at this code and see, well, is it compliant to a coding standard such as MISRA C 2012? I'd also like to be able to look at the quality of this code and see, well, how complex is it? And then as the code executes, I'd like to be able to find out, well, how much of this code have we actually exercised? I probably won't get 100% coverage. So then what I'd like to be able to do is to use some unit testing in order to be able to complement that coverage. OK, let's stop the execution here and let's switch now to TB Vision. And inside TB Vision, I've already analyzed the code. We can see here all the various functions. So now I can very simply right click and do a code review. And in this particular case, this code was not written to be compliant to MISRA. And so we have quite a few different violations. Let's take a look at this one here. If I double click, it opens up my editor and takes me to the place where the violation occurs. In this case, well, I should have put a, a U here. That's very easy to fix. And it's something I can do later on. Now, what about the quality of this code? Well, let's take a look at a system call graph. And the system call graph is going to show all the functions. We can see how they're interconnected. It's all a color coded to show in green the system calls. Well, I can put this into various different views to view things like the metrics that gives an idea of testability. Metrics like how many exit points, what's the fan in, the fan out. Also, I could look at metrics that give us an idea of maintainability. And I can sort and rapidly find the function that has the highest cyclomatic complexity. Well, let's take a look at that function in a graphical way using a flow graph. And so here we've got a graphic representation of that function. If I click on this particular block in the code, we see it corresponds to this block over here. If I clicked on this block, we can see it corresponds to that block over there. In a similar way, I can take a look at some of these branches and I can see the branches from there down to here. OK, so what I'd now like to be able to do is to execute this code on my target. And as it executes, find out how much of the code have we exercised. So let's go and perform what we call the dynamic analysis. So this is going to go and generate the instrumented code. It's then going to perform the build. It's just downloaded it to the target. It's executing now on the target. And we're using the J-Link in order to be able to read the data, get it back to the host, analyze it. And now we're going to be able to find out, well, how much of that code did we exercise? So once again, let's go to a system core graph. And this time on the core graph, let's put it into a view that shows us the coverage. And there we can see we've got pretty good coverage. Let's go to our integer to ASCII function and we'll view that graphically. And we're going to be able to see we have 79% statement coverage. And so here we have three blocks of statements or four blocks of statements that have not been executed. Also, we have some branches that have not been executed. Well, why haven't we executed these blocks of code? It looks like we've never had a value less than 180. Well, that's very easy to get coverage using the unit testing tool tbrun. So let's invoke tbrun and we can run some unit tests. Now, inside tbrun, I'm going to open some sequence of test cases that I've previously created. So we'll just accept that. And there I've got seven test cases. 
If we take a look at the inputs and outputs, we can see each one has got different inputs and different expected outputs. Well, let's go and execute this. This is now generating a harness. It's built it. It downloaded it to the target. And once again, this is now running on the target, waiting to get the data back. And then we should find, hopefully, that all these tests pass. Well, that's good. What about the coverage? Well, that should have increased. And we can see very clearly that now we have 100% statement coverage, 100% branch decision coverage, and also 100% MCDC coverage for that integer to ASCII function. OK, so hopefully that's given you an idea of how we can achieve functional safety using the SEGA Embedded Studio for ARM. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.